All right, folks. Again, like I said, we are back for the St. Augustine versus the Gregory School game. This should be a good one here. And number 13, Chris Schlovak. I don't know if many teams right now have planned for Gregory just because looking at their current record, um, it hasn't been the best, but they have had their returning 1A Offensive Player of the Year from last year, returning this year, Vincent Edwards, back to the team, and he is an impact Number two, Carter Reynolds. So I just want to see how this is going to, how, how the team itself is going to sustain for St. Augustine, how they're going to sustain against the Gregory School. Number 14, Vince um, Edwards. Without Vince for the past, you know, month and a half, my opinion, I think the Gregory School has gotten better from the players playing with each other and playing that happened to really. Number 42, David Dawson. And number 45, Chris. All right, I apologize. So like I was saying here, the Gregory School has you know, they've been playing very well. I think it's been beneficial for them not to be playing with uh, Vincent for like the past month and a half. Now he's back. This is a totally different team here. Um, with the St. Augustine team, they are led by Andreas. He is averaging 10 points a game. Excellent player. Seen him for a long time on the club scene. He can do it on both ends of the court. Has a motor, you know, second to none. So we're going to see how this all plays out right now. We're at the start of tip off. And here we go. Today's game officials are Anthony Miles, Rafael Gallego, and Charles Blue. All right, Gregory has won the tip. As you can tell right now, the Gregory School has a crowd out here. First attempt, no good. Andreas down the court. That's gonna stay here. Big still right now. Taylor Seen gets it back. All right, folks, we're sitting at almost, we're a minute within this game right now, still no score. attempt they did they did get it back David L for two nice hustle play as coming down the court here most of these kids in this court for the Gregory School I've seen play for probably the last I don't want to say five years. A very good development as far as with these kids these past couple, these few years. Uh, they have brought some fresh blood though with number 42. He is a freshman. I was calling Devin Dawson. At 
Yeah, one more basket, one more shot attempt. All right, so St. Augustine is finally on the board here. Those are those hands I was talking about. All right, we got a, we got a slamming jam from Vincent Edwards. That's your team's leading score right there. If I'm him, I'm gonna keep shooting. Gotta get going. Now, St. Gregory's actually a 1A school, is that correct? Yes, they are a 1A school. A 1A school with a couple of state championships nice. in the last, I'm gonna say six years. And St. Augustine's 2A. Correct. Soft touch. Good rebound, good rebound. I believe last time Gregory played on this court, they played against, uh, I believe it was Buena. I believe that was about five years ago. That's the last time they were actually in this uh, Martha Luther King Day Classic. And that was actually uh, one of the last games that we actually saw was Buena. And we already know that they had some good movement. to get some type of offense going. A little pull on that. Late call, but you know, a good call. You know, it was it was the right call. Sometimes I like it when my girls call a little later too. Ah, you know, late night kind of guy. I'm, yeah, you know, that was a little more than I needed to know. <laughs> All right, folks, as as this day is going, we're about at 11 o'clock, we're gonna start seeing more people filter in here. Yeah, you're already starting to see the, the stands coming. That's why I'm telling you, if you are out there watching right now, you wanna make sure you get down. As he was mentioning earlier, it was $5, right? Was it five dollars for six, a student? Six, six dollars to get in for students oh, and ten dollars for adults. For, yeah, perfect. And I mean, this is like some good basketball, especially as the game or the day progresses. We're going to run into a lot of those good games. So you know, and it's also great. Like you're seeing cheerleaders, you're seeing the players, you're seeing you know commentation. You're seeing a lot of guys coming in. A little, we got a little celeb over next to us right now too. Mr. Oh, yeah, AIA we, guy. Yeah, we, we have Chris Miller right next to us, All right. Tucson legend. Now, are you coaching today or are you just, you're with us all day, huh? Yeah, we, we, we have Chris all We're day. get you mic'd up. We gotta get him mic'd up. You want to get him mic'd up? He, yeah, let's yeah. get him mic'd up. I'm all right being the guy in, in the quiet storm. Well, you, you know, we can always just hook one of these other mics up and you can just hold it, but. Well, if I had an extra cable, I would. Oh, man. <laughs> Didn't we go to Guitar Center yesterday? Not for that. Oh, all right. 
Quick plug for also, Guitar Center there. The Come on, we got a box out. You know, this, um, Jump I, I would say this, um, Arrow, this Arrow's summer, back to the Hawks. We, we, me in theory, we actually went to a St. Augustine practice. And, um, actually, I think, yeah, it was, it was, actually, it was during the school year. Yeah, it was during the school year we actually went to a practice before the season actually started. Um, they had a little bit of dedication as far as, you know, getting the reps in. Back up for two, David L. I know everybody was not there. Um, I think the difference is, like, if you if you look at the Gregory School, uh, they're led by Craig Everson. He runs a program, and they're usually running, you know, they'll have a few sessions that'll be having, you know, workouts going on, and, and the kids are constantly, you know, in the gym. on the floor right now. So, just like I was saying earlier, Chris, with um, with the game itself, is, is we're only at a minute and 45 seconds left in this first period. Gregory School's at 10, St. Augustine's at one. They only got, they made one free throw. If they just focused on just trying to get some quality basketball going on and trying to get to the hole versus, you know, running the motion. Because it seems like what I'm seeing right now, as soon as they throw that ball in the middle to the motion, I don't know that the, the gentleman in there is a true basketball player. He looks he he looks monstrous. I mean, he looks like a like. A, I'll agree with you from way over here. He looks like a great football player, but I don't know if at this point, like seeing what I'm seeing now, you just run a five out and just work on whatever opportunity you have from there. Um, I'm still on that bandwagon of just putting number three and Andreas just put the ball in his hand and just go with it. Um, well, you know, you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the mic to Mr. Man here. Oh, all right, cool. John, how's it going there? Welcome. No, oh, thank you, thank you, doing good. I'm glad to see you out here today. You know, as the day progresses, we'll get the rest of our team out. That's going to be the second basket for Vincent Edwards. Right, basket for two, number 14, Vince Edwards. He's already started off with the dunk, and then this is going to be his layup. And that's that's one guy you're you're happy to see be back on the court, Vince Edwards. He is a, I want to say, he is a, he's a freak of an athlete. Like, just jumping out the gym, hustle. I've seen, like I said, I've seen the progression of him since he's been a child, like a small child. So, um, you know, to see him not even in that first half of the season and this is him coming out now, I think this might play a favor for Gregory going into playoffs. Oh, definitely. Uh, I had a discussion with somebody the other day, and I think it was actually you, how we talked about, uh, missing Vince actually, I think, made that team a lot better, a lot stronger, um, and they ended up winning a lot of games without him. You know, he's a former, you know, the reigning 1A conference player of the year, so big piece, but to do what they've been able to do without him, huge. It's nice when you see, like, this level of players on – like this level of, 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 of feel, like the 1A level, you know what I mean? Just seeing, just like Vince, I'm, I feel confident that he could play any level, you know, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A. And 1A was, is blessed to have him. Yeah, easily, easily one of the most under-recruited, overlooked players in, in Arizona, all of Arizona probably. And he's currently a senior right now, so. Number three, Andreas Bettencourt foul going up. And like I was saying, this is how you get your baskets right now. Number 14, Vince Edwards. You have to get him from the line. And you got to stay aggressive with your guy.
Gregory's is ahead right now. 12, St. Augustine, four. We got 59 seconds left in this first period. We got away from a little bit of a walk, but. That cut score, David L. Offensive foul here. Charge. Offensive foul, call the number zero, Jake Lupo. Here's the game for the Hawks, number two, Carter Reynolds. So, John, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself right now? Well, right now I'm currently the JV coach at Ironwood Ridge High School, um, varsity assistant there as well. I have a club program here in Tucson. We do do pretty well. Um, I write for Arizona Preps. Uh, you know, we, we highlight players, uh, we try to give exposure, all that good stuff. Um, and then I, I just love watching the kids of Tucson play. You know, try to try to trying to bring right now, you know, the same as you guys, trying to bring exposure to Southern Arizona. Because um, as people will start noticing here, there's a lot of talent here, um, and, it, and it will be seen. So, but yeah, born and raised here in Tucson, and just love the game of basketball. Love it. That was called number three, Andreas Beckenford. This is a kid right here that needs to start letting loose a little bit. He has a really great three-point shot, Andres Betancourt. I got a chance to watch St. Augustine quite a bit at the Pueblo uh, Fat Lever Tournament. And they move the ball a lot. They pass a little too much maybe. But once uh, Bancourt starts shooting the ball, gets a little confidence, they become a dangerous team. And then that's, I think that's what they got to do here is get a little confidence in their shot and realize that they, they're not really going to be able to attack the middle. Just to the left of us, you have the famous Morales Journal, the famous journalist Morales Journal. Accurately advertising. Creative advertising celebrating their 55th anniversary. That's what I'm talking about. You gotta let loose with this kid. So Gregory is cutting it right now into the single digits. They're down by nine. Seven minutes and nine seconds left in the second period. Oh. 
Yeah, I, I, I do apologize. My, my partner Chris told me. I'm sorry. St. Augustine has cut it down to nine right now. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's a turnover right now. Everson's going to bring them in, give them a pep talk, tell them what they probably should be doing right now. Don't lose sight of what's going on. St. Augustine, though, on the other hand, their coach is telling them, hey, we're in reach right now. Nine points, six minutes, 42 seconds left in this period. Let's go. Let's just let's throw it all out on the floor right now. All right, right now on the screen, if you're looking, those are going to be the 4A rankings right now. As you can see, Saguaro Cougars, which who my son plays for, or is ranked third. Are those the open rankings? Or? As of the 12th. Is that? So for the 2A rankings right now, we got St. Augustine ranked 19th. 6A rankings, we have uh, Sunnyside, Rincon, 19 and 21, and Miranda at 30. The start of the third or second. I'm sorry. I'm not at the start. I'm sorry. We're at, we're out at the start of the after that timeout right now. We have a foul. We have Chris going to the line, number 45. Foul's called number 11. So, so what changes are you seeing right now, John, in, in the uh, Augustine's play? It, it just looks like they're getting a little more confidence going on. Uh, like you said, I think they, they realize the game's not out of reach. Um, and each time they bring the ball core, each time, you know, like a missed foul, for example, missed shot, a rebound, just slowly starts building more confidence. And, the, and they're kind of a dangerous team. If you let them stick around seven, eight points, you know, in the first half, and all of a sudden they cut it a little more in the second half, all of a sudden that fourth quarter, they, they, they believe they can win. Um, and if you're Gregory, you got to kind of, kind of shut that off right now. Free throw attempts, no good. Uh, you got to slow that down, get it to your playmaker. Yeah, I was going to say, this is normally the shot he puts up. That would have been huge if they could have hit that shot. Vince Edwards needs to get active in this period right now. He's, you know, that dunk excited, got his, his team up, got him going, motivated him. You know, I'll, if I was Vince, I'm, I'm going to keep doing that just because, you know, he's, he's pretty proficient at that shot. Um, 
Yeah, he'll definitely make that shot about 80% of the time. It's, you know, just when you've been out for like a month, month and a half, things seem a little different. And I got a chance to talk to Vince the other day when the, they played San Miguel. Uh, he he kind of told me he's, you know, still a little out of shape. You know, like you said, taking, taking that month off. Uh, he's still getting his basketball legs on him. But you saw the athletic dunk at the beginning of the game. I think he's coming back pretty quickly. Devin Dawson, this kid, he's a freshman. Um, freshman, one of the top eighth graders last year in the city. Coming into this Gregory squad, helping start off or get something ignited for him. You know, Augustine is a stop right here. Ooh. Vince picking it up. Rebound and put back. Vince Edwards. Augustine had it drop down to seven. Yeah, you don't want to give uh, Gregory the same kind of momentum they started the game with, ending the half now. See so yeah, you guys. So currently on the mic is me, Titus Palmer, and we got John Miller. If you guys get the opportunity, please share this link. Um, you know, for all the games that we got going on today, we want to make sure that you know this information. Um, as far as like these kids playing basketball and like, especially in McKell, gets out there. Also too, like I said, follow the page. If you follow the page, you, you'll see we go all around Devin from Dawson. Pinell County all the way, you know, as far south as possible, just to get coverage of Southern Arizona's games. That's what they need it right there. That looked like a three to me. I don't know how they yeah. call that a two. I, I think they went by the the college, <laughs> the college three-point line. They saw he was inside of it. All right. Uh, someone better come and help. Three pointer, Jake Lupo. I do apologize. People, we had a little bit of a technical right, difficulty. Right, we will get this fixed, though, for you right now. Camera guy just had to go to the restroom. <laughs> So it's nice, as, like I said, as, as the day carries on, our production team's getting a little bit larger because people are getting off work. <laughs> Able to walk, well, I won't say walk away, but take a, take a break from their families and come out here and enjoy all this great basketball. Only other place you're gonna get great basketball like this so all day is gonna be your Pac-12 tournament. Right now you're getting to see some of the best kids in the city playing some basketball. Jump ball. Alternating possession gives the ball back to the Gregory School. Re-entering the game for the Gregory School number 14, Vince Edwards. Minute and 50 seconds left here in the in the second period. Oh. 
Let's see if Gregory can either make this lead increase or St. Augustine can make a decrease. Carter Renner, all the way to the basket for two. It's a terrible two That's minutes it. here for St. Augustine. Oh. We got away with the walk. You know, even right now, St. Augustine just needs to slow the ball down and just take the last shot. You know, you, you, you don't need to take the opportunity of giving Gregory another couple points before, you know, halftime. No, absolutely. All right. So what we're going to do right now, folks, once we get to halftime, we're going to have... Titus Palmer Jr. give an interview. He's in the, he's interviewing both players from each team uh, throughout the day here. Just you know, he pulls them pulls them out from the, the the next games. Last game he had Vince and Andreas. Um, he's gonna be bringing some some young ladies in right now, having some conversation. And like I said, we'll we'll get ready for this next game. But this is what I was telling you about, John. You know, slow it down for the last shot. Yep, they went right down, threw it up. And boom, and lost the record capitalizes That's on exactly it. Exactly what I was talking about. David L for two. On the way, on the way. You know, even as, you know, and like I said, I'm not going to doubt the coach does not know. It. He, I, he knows what he's doing, you know, but in the situation for myself, as soon as they score that last bucket, I'm calling timeout. Hey, listen, we're going to hold this out. Let's take the last shot. Go at it at maybe like seven or eight seconds, and then we'll, we'll live whatever we got. This game just went from a, they were down by nine points, and it just stretched. And they just turned it over again. And they fouled on the, on the last second buzzer beater. So, he, yeah, wow. This so went now, from nine to what? So if he makes all these, this is going to go from nine to the buzzer, 18? 18? Yeah. Or 17? Yeah, be. if he makes it, well, he gets three shots. So if he goes there, it'd be about 18 point game. He has to get three shots right now. So either yeah, it's a 15 point game right now. So either they're going to say that fouls before the shot, then he still has two shots, or either it was in the act of shooting, which is going to give him three shots. No, there is a one-on-one. -on -one. I thought it was on the shot, but. I thought it was on the shot, too, as well. But like we like we were talking about. They got almost, what, is this going to be like, what, eight points right now off of just the last minute? In just the last minute, yeah. And another turnover. Oh, I was going to say. say inside the injury right now. <laughs> All right, so we got, we got 34, Gregory, 17, St. Augustine. We'll see you guys at half.
Alright, yeah, you just come here. Big time, right here. I'm gonna keep them right here. Yep. No way, they bring Where do I go? Like right here? Any seat, anyone in the seat. Put the mic right here, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please return to the big court. Huh? And we will now recognize the MLK honorees from St. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Alright, speak into the mic real quick so I can hear you. Okay. Okay. All right. How's how you guys today going so far? Good. So right now we have Sydney Anderson and Kayla Carter. Um, if you guys just tell me a little bit about yourself, how the season's going, um, thoughts. Um, had some tough games, but we're excited to keep playing some harder teams and bigger challenges, so yeah, we're going to do it. Um, I'm Kayla. Our season's going pretty decent. We've um, improved a lot, and I'm also excited to be able to play um, harder teams and optimize our opportunities. And I noticed uh, from out of you guys are 3-10. and ten. Uh, If you could run me through, like, the season and um, what's been struggles and what's helped, you know? Um, we definitely have had some struggles, but the main thing is we're trying to play as a team and really, like, work together, so. Yeah. And then for you, Sydney, I see you guys are 12-6, and six, not too bad. Uh, run me through that. Um, yeah, we've had some tough losses. Really 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 a lot of our wins have been really good team wins. Coach Lopez is in his second year as an assistant coach with the Gregory School Boys Basketball and then, so for that first half of the season, it was looking pretty nice. Uh, what do you expect for the rest? Uh, yeah, we're going to play some hard teams, so it'll get a little challenging along the way. We have some hard teams coming up, and the goal is just always to go play out uh, as hard as you can. And then for you, Kayla, what do you expect for your second half of the season? Um, I expect us to do a lot better. Um, we've learned how to play together, so I think we're going to be able to compete. Yeah, and I noticed you average 12 points a game. Um, if you just run me through, like, how you get your spots, uh, what's helped you through the season, say, practice-wise or waking up at a certain time? Um, definitely the communication on the floor has helped me be able to, like, adapt to different positions. Mm -hmm. So I do play the inside, but also step out to the wing when needed. Okay, and then for you, Sydney, I see you average 19.4. Um, run me through that. That's a pretty high amount, you know, almost a 20. What's your goals? Um, yeah, my goal is definitely 20. Um, I'll be at 20 at the end of the season. That's the goal, but mm -hmm. um, my whole goal of the game is to be a three. Ladies and gentlemen, for your halftime entertainment, on the floor, the Gregory Jazz Band. always make it rain from the perimeter, and then also try and get pull up so it's not falling. Of course. All righty. Well, thank you for coming on. Um, had fun with you, ladies. Good luck today.
Yeah. You're live, sir. Hey, Chris. This is like old times. Hey, man. I'm telling you. Like you and me on the road in <laughs> right? football. This is awesome what right. you guys have set up here. Yeah. I got Mr. Javier Morales on here. As we're getting all started to start off the second. I hope people realize what all that you do with all this oh video my. production. You do. Like, it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's, it, and it benefits these guys. These, oh yeah, these young players. But I love what you guys have been doing, obviously for years. That's 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 the good stuff. Well, it's good. We we need more people to do that, so we don't ever lose sight of how important that is. So it's good that you guys are starting this with the Palmers. Oh it's yeah, awesome. it's, it's fun stuff, man. There, there you go. So, who is it that's that's actually some of the stars on these teams? Do you know? Uh, Edwards, right there. Time out, Gregory School. For the Gregory School, number 14. He's got a, he's probably has about 1,500 points. Right. Senior. He seems like he's been around forever. He's, he was good since he was a freshman. I'm not sure he's going to college though, but I know he's going to play in college. Right. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know very much about the. I know um, the Gregory School is a 1A school and uh, St. Augustine's 2A, so right. they're, they're not in the uh, you know the quote limelight as much as they should be. So that's another good reason why this they get the player Mikhail. Oh yeah. Get out in front of everybody, play in a college arena. They can always say they played in a college arena. So which one of these games are you looking forward to throughout the day, or oh. is there anyone that's really kind of? You're like, ah, oh, that's the the bread and butter game. The for South the... Point Sororo game. Oh, the, the girls? girls yeah. yeah. Six o'clock. And then the Choya Kelly and Foothills game right after the boys game. Oh, that's um, supposed that to be should a be a good, good one. one. Too. I always like watching Masai Dean Jr. play. He's he's worth coming in and seeing. And uh, you know, Masai Dean Sr. is the coach, and uh, he he was a legendary player at Tucson High. I believe he played when he was in high school. And then of course, Tucson High's playing too. Yeah. At 4:30 against Morana. Against Morana. So the, there's, there's a lot of games here. Yeah. Uh, I know in the past, I think one time they they had a, a like a Phoenix area team come here. Uh, that didn't happen this year. So, uh, but I think overall the the, the schools are well represented. Good competition. Different, different from like as we mentioned from 1A all the way up to to 6A. Right. And then you got the guys, the girls, both of them, you know, kind of representing as well, which is kind of a good thing as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, the Saudita game, the, the, they beat Amphi, what, 55 to 30. There, there, we saw two really good freshmen in that game that we're going to see right. grow and, and mature. The, the girl from Amphi, I can't pronounce her last name. I need to, I need to uh, practice her last name. But she, she had 15 points. Um, and then for the Saurita girls, uh, Camillo, she had 10 points. So again, we're, we're going to see a lot of young people here, a lot of players we can you know, follow in their careers, uh, and some seniors like Masai Dean Sr. So it's a good mix. And then you got the Saguaro South Point girls game. It has you know two teams that are going to challenge for the state title. They're probably both going to be in the open division too, so it, it's it'll be exciting. So what do you game. what do you how do you feel about the open division? So it's how many teams is it? Thirty two. There's thirty two on the boys and girls side. Right. Uh, I, I I like it because if they lose in the first or second round, they get to play in their conference. They right. Turn. That's that's a lot nicer than the football where it's like yo, it's done. Yeah. You know. So I was I was I was finding out about that, which which is kind of really you know a cool thing to have. Um, yes. Nice shot. Nice shot there. Andre uh, Bettencourt for two. Bettencourt, he's a good player. All, a lot of these St. Augustine guys, they could they could be at Saguaro possibly because they're right in the same area. But they they've chosen to play at St. Augustine. Yeah. But yeah, that uh, the open division, I think it's a good thing. It's it's hard to do in football because you only have one game a week. But with basketball, right. they can they can play two or three games in a week. So. It makes sense, and uh, 
Do you think they should start doing the alignments kind of like based oh, off of the, the level of talent? Kind of like the football is where it's it's the talent level or the success of the program. Do you think they should start doing that for basketball as well? Um, well, it's more, it seems like it's more, it's not as drastic as in football where you have like the clear cut teams that are good and then there's a huge drop off. Basketball, you can hit, you, it's more spread. It, there's more talented teams. So I think that's the re real reason why there's 32 in the open division, not like 16. So the, uh, I think, I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's fine the way basketball oh, is, yeah. is configured with their conferences and their regions. Right. Whereas we know in football, even at the 4A level, you can have one super region and then the other region is you know, average. <laughs> right. But but it has to be that way because that gives those teams that are trying are struggling and trying to get better to be in that one region, right. and then you have the highly competitive one. So I, uh, that that's, makes sense. You know, being that we are talking about basketball, let's go ahead. What do you think about the uh, Rincon and Choya both being dropped down to 4A? Football? Yeah, in football. Uh, it's needed. Uh, they, I, mean, I like that, the fact that Paul Verde is trying to go to 2A. Right. Um, which is, makes sense. Um, Rio Rico is trying to go down to uh, 3A. So, you know, I, I I think that's a mistake. I think uh, I think Jeff Skurin probably thinks they'll be more competitive at one classification lower, but we know. We follow it. Yeah. 3A is I mean, the tough conference. It, it's, it's, but you know what's interesting, and, and I was trying to bring this up, is that when, with teams such as um, Sabadita, which I saw try to petition back up, which we know they'll probably get that. Well, the, I don't know, because they, they petitioned to go back up last year, and, and they, they got it. Right. And then they went 0-10. Right. So they, they might not. They might not. They, I, might, they don't want to be 3A because of the travel. Right, right. Even if Sabino and... And Pushridge are, are a long distance to travel from Saudi. So if you saw, for example, a couple more teams such as like a Rio Rico, Sawarita moving into, for example, the the three A, we could lose a Thatcher or a Safford to especially since Marinci and you know, Marinci moved up. Right. You know, so maybe that becomes another region and it's not such a strong region like we had dealt with. Sauritza would be for that, all for that, and so, so would Rio Rico. Oh, I think it, that that would be a beautiful sure thing. So if, I don't know if Sabino and Pushridge would, because I think yeah, they strength the schedule. They like the competition with Thatcher and Safford. Safford was off this year, but that um, you know Thatcher and then Benson is trying to go back to two A. So that'd be interesting. We'll see if that happens. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, but they they made the playoffs, so that's going to be a difficult thing. But I mean, yeah. you know, power to it. Hopefully, yeah, it goes well. Chris, Chris Kidney has a breakfast there. yeah you know, I, I, you know I get a mail order prep <laughs> but yeah you guys are doing a great job here so yeah. it's great to see that you guys are doing this and you want to talk to Mr. Titus I'm sorry you can talk to Mr. Titus oh hello so your son is he where, where what is his plans now I know he's got hip, hip, he's got hip surgery he's rehabilitating he's here doing a lot of media for you guys what's, what's his plans so right now he is out so the way his surgery went he has surgery on the 25th he is on crutches for four weeks after the four weeks uh, from the day of the crutches from so from the four weeks he'll have another four months before he can actually do anything on that leg uh, right. or actually on anything so he's still he can't lift he can't activate his core um, so on May 22nd, he'll be able to, he'll be clear to do whatever he needs to do. And then from there, I guess from, cause the doctor we're dealing with is, or she's Dr. Hamilton. She's uh, Abigail Hamilton. She is the surgeon here for actually the U of A sports, um, which is pretty awesome. So we got one of the best to actually help him and, um, get him better. And, um. So she, she's been working with us, getting him going. She performed the surgery, uh, but she did say it'll take him until about a year after the initial surgery to feel normal again. Well, it's good you're getting that done. Um, was there any debate about letting him play the season and then doing it? There was a lot of debate. It yeah. was um, the the whole debate was. She she explained. She said nothing can really 
you, you can't make it any worse. You're just going right. to be paying through pain. It's just the, your, your pain management, how much you can take. Right. Um, so we were having him play his games. He was, he was taking three ibuprofens, but then we started noticing, like, the last couple of weeks um, after his games, the, we didn't allow him to take ibuprofen, like, at practice, his practice day. So when he went to practice, that's when he was feeling terrible. And so we had to make that decision. We t asked him, like, what – what do he want to – do you want to deal with this now or do you want to deal with this four years from now? So his plan is actually go to GCU, talk with uh, Coach Drew up there. They're going to bring him on as far as the program. Mm -hmm. um, and when he goes up there, is only – like if he, got the sur if, he, if he got the surgery after the season, then what would have happened is he wouldn't have really had the opportunity to get it once he went up there. Yeah. So – you know, that's pretty much where we're at right now with him. Uh, it's, it's good. Now he can train himself and get ready and be free of pain or, or less pain. And, he, you know. He's already feeling better. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is, you know he, he, he feels a little bad just because it's like, you know, he got the surgery done, but the team is still in good hands right now. Uh, they have Cisco Lamas over there. Yeah. That kid is amazing. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but – he is the best freshman I've seen in a long time come out, like, just be able to just step on the court and do what he does. Um, and then also they have Nick Pons, which is another great, you know, he's a leader himself. Um, so, and then you have Coach Henry, which is, you know, he's surgical with coaching. So he, he, he'll know how to get them through what he needs to get them through. He has a good background with Dick McConnell and been at Saguaro forever. But yeah, I, I appreciate you guys letting me come on here. And you're, you and, like I told Chris, you guys are doing a great job. This is something that's needed for basketball. Um, so yeah, we your son's helping you out, Titus. So that's great. Yeah, I got him on. Then we got we got John here. Uh -huh. John is um, this dude is he, he's another guy like another staple within this, the the community that's trying to help as many kids out as possible. Um, you know, so we got him out. Then later this afternoon, we should have Theory. We have Diego right behind us as well. He's on the camera. Um, that's where we, we have our uh, our home base is set up at his uh, his warehouse. So we'll be having a – we'll be doing our podcast streams later. Uh, we actually have a area dedicated for what we're doing in his, his at, at his warehouse. So Great, great. It's, this is uh... – much needed, like I said, and it, it's in it. Like I told Chris, it's for these guys, for the players that they get noticed. So that's awesome. So continued success. Or, All right, or thank you. Future success, I should say, because we're just starting out. So thank you guys for having me on. All right, brother. Number 22, Ben A. with the two. What's going on, John? How are you, sir? Doing good, good. Give me some of your thoughts about this game so far. Um, Gregory with the N1, looking like he's going to be 47 to 25, leading into the fourth quarter with a minute and 30 left. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, really good for Gregory. Really good for Gregory. Uh, as, you know, I was talking to my dad at the end of the first, first half. And so, you know, it seemed, they were right there within striking distance, but they kind of just let it get away. They allowed eight points. I think it was eight, eight or nine points in the last minute of the second quarter. Uh huh. You can kind of see the body language right now with St. Augustine. It's just they just want the game to kind of end. Yeah, I'm definitely picking up those same vibes. Um, you know, earlier in the game, you noticed like Sega Augustine couldn't really keep up, but then it seems like they kind of picked up the pace. But it just seems it's not enough, you know. Um. I don't know. I don't see much hope in this, considering that Gregor has controlled this game the whole time. Big block by Vince Edwards. 
Yeah, and it's, it's play like those that just show the difference between the two teams. Now Capitalizing on those transition breaks. It was a 17 point lead at halftime. Now it's 24 at the end of the third quarter. Well, getting to the end of the third quarter right now. St. Augustine just kind of needs to start throwing up shots and not dribbling, passing around. Uh, yeah. If they want to try to come back and win this game. Yeah, something I think I noticed was with um, Andres, um, number three, I noticed the offense is heavily flowing through him. And I think that can be, with certain teams, like a weakness and a, a strength at the same time. Um, I think for them, it's just he sometimes he might be doing too much. And, I mean, you can't blame him. The offense run through him. But at times, it can be a little too much. And I think that's kind of what's helped, like, hurting them down the stretch. And he's only a junior, you know. It's Very young. So to put that kind of pressure on him, you know, he, a senior would be something different. They had a little more experience, but you're definitely putting a lot of pressure on a junior. Mm -hmm. Let's see how they close out this third quarter. I'm loving the ball movement so far. Let's see if we can keep it up. Not a terrible shot. I'll take that. Let's see if they can finish down low. Doesn't go in. Um, TGS Gregory School leads 49-25. Um, foul count 4-3. Gregory 4. Um, St. Augustine 3. Um, looking like a little foul game. I think this game will smooth by pretty quick considering the foul count and the lead. Um, but it's just until we see. So now, Titus, you, you got a chance to play on this court last year. Tell us a little bit about that, what it, what it felt like, you know. McHale Center is probably one of the, the biggest things in, in Tucson, Arizona, as far as, like, you know, history and just tradition. Um, yeah. So how, how was that? How, how, how did it make you feel playing on this court last year? It was fun. It was more like electrifying, like, powerful moment because when you sit on the court and, like, warm up, like, you kind of come to realize, like, you know, there's a lot of legends that played on this court, a lot of NBA players. So from not even just from U of N general, but, like other, t like, other college teams. So just the, var the verity of the fact that, like, I'm on the same court as other people really just helped me confidence-wise and just made me realize, like, it gave, gave me more of, like, hope and a chance, you know. Um, I will say that depth perception is off <laughs> trying to shoot. I think when I played last year, I didn't really shoot too much. It was, like, all layups, and I just took what they could give me. Um, but, no, it's fun. It's really fun, and I love the opportunity that they give us every year around this time. Definitely want to. It's really fun. Yeah, because when you kind of look at the, the rims from this court side view, it just looks like it's in the middle of an empty room. Oh, yeah. And it, it does kind of <laughs> throw it off a little bit. Yeah, it looks black, um, or I suppose dark uh, blue, you might say. Um, it, it, I don't know. It's it's rough. I mean, the amount of air balls I've seen today has been outrageous. And good shooters. Super surprising. Look at the ball movement right there. I'm loving it. I like the little high post action right there. It flows pretty well, if you ask me. But no, John, let me. So how's it going with recruiting right now? Um, I noticed you've been all over, because even though you're like a, a coach for Ironwood, um, how's that going so far this year? It's going good. You get a chance to see and meet a lot of the kids here in Tucson. Uh, you kind of see the potential, which ones are taking it serious, which ones, you know, really want to go to the next level versus just say it. Um, and those are the kids we're kind of trying to really help out of the kids that really want it, that are showing us they want it, mm -hmm. um, that have the grades to prove they want it. Um, because right now it's you know, the transfer portal and, and, and all these kids staying back another year. And, it, I mean, the transfer portal kind of and COVID just kind of messed up a lot of oh, these oh, oh, players. Um, so now more than ever, like the classroom is that much more important. You know, 3.5 and below is, is, you know, anything below 3.5 is going to be hard. GPA wise, it's going to be hard for kids to get noticed. Mm -hmm. You know, 3.5 and above, and it definitely helps you out a lot. Um, but you just got to do those separators, you know. Like I said, great academics, uh, what you can do on the court. Uh, and, and Tucson right now is kind of at a disadvantage from Phoenix and just about everywhere else. Uh, but I think. 
I think we're definitely starting the movement right now. And we're definitely going to change that. Yeah. So then with that, um, I know I, you mentioned that you can, like, kind of tell apart from the rest of the crowd and the ones that really want it. Um, can you give me a few examples of some players that really caught your eye and that you really are interested in at the moment? Uh, I mean, well, on the court right now, Vince Edwards, uh, you know, he plays 1A. So he, he gets no help from recruitment at that level. Mm -hmm. um, he definitely has to make it up in club ball or wherever he's playing. Uh, but he is definitely probably the most under-recruited, overlooked player probably in Southern Arizona uh, due to his athleticism and just his ability to play and his frame. Um, but Noah Williams at Arnold Ridge, you know, 6'8 forward, uh, can attack the basket. I mean, it's 6'8, you know, kind of hard to overlook. Uh, Masai Dean at Choya, definitely one of the top point guards. In, in all of Arizona, not just Southern Arizona. Um, yeah. And these are just seniors I'm kind of talking about right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Ben Kamak over at Cienega. Uh, he actually has a Division three offer right now. Uh, got some he NAIA interest. Uh, let me see who else I miss. You know, Cam, Cam Walker is one of those great big prospects too, very athletic. He's very uh, overlooked. Very overlooked. I think he'd, he'd definitely be a really good junior college uh, if that's his focus. Um, you know, I talked to him the other day. He might even consider post-grad, uh, which I think would be very beneficial for him um, mm -hmm. as far as academic-wise goes. And just playing on a national stage and getting, getting looked at. Yeah. yeah, I'm loving all the Southern Arizona recruits. Uh, looking pretty steady at this moment. Um, who's game? I mean... It's had the same outcome as started from the beginning. I mean, the 27 point lead. I'm not sure what else to expect from St. Augustine. Well, St. Augustine right now, you just want to finish with some, you know, dignity, get a little kind of a little pride, um, and not leave the court just bruised and battered. Mm -hmm. uh, Gregory's gonna gonna take this one. You just gotta kind of get now get some motivation going into your next game. So we got five five minutes and 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 55-29. Yeah, I don't really think it's a matter of Gregory hitting their shots more than maybe St. Augustine not. I think it's just a matter of, like, they're just working their butts off, you know. They're getting all those turnovers, capitalizing on everything they get, you know. They're not taking anything for granted. I think that was the difference in this game. Wanna take a picture? <laughs> Full time out call by the Gregory School. You know, I just looked at the rankings. St. Augustine's number twenty five in two A. Oh. Uh, you know, they're they're kinda of, this game was huge, I think. Uh, trying to secure a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. uh, they got number 22 Chandler Prep next week, or uh, actually later this week, I believe, tomorrow. And they're number 22. Uh, and then later this week, you go to Horizon Honors, who's number 19. So they got a chance to get back and possibly try to get back in the top 20 uh, before the final couple weeks of the season come up. Uh, but I, I believe you want to be at, you know, six, I think they believe they take, they take top 16. Um, so right now, Sagan Augustine is just kind of looking on the outside of that. Yeah, and then for Gregory, I think um, when I last saw, they were, I believe it was like 9 and 10, um, which is pretty surprising. That's not too bad considering that Vince hasn't been there half the season, you know? Yeah, so Gregory's 15 right now in 1A. That's not too bad. No, they're, they're right there in the playoff hunt. They have a lot more uh, room for improvement. Um, I think if Vince can get back in his, like, normal, casual, give me, like, 20 a game groove, you know, I think that would definitely help them out um, with his impact. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but he won the region player of the year, right? He was the conference player conference. of the year for the 1A last year. Yeah. Yes. So I think um, – if we can get him back to that point 
which I think, you know, you set out for so long. It's going to take a couple games. Because um, he's playing well, but, you know, there's a high performing, like, next level. I think if you give him some time, he'll get there. St. Augustine needs to make the plays that you know keep you motivated, get you know a little, little bit of motivate momentum late in the mm -hmm. game. Even though the game's pretty much over, uh, they're not quitting. They're playing. Yeah. But I see what you're saying by the depth perception here. Yeah, it's rough. It really is. Um, because you play in the gym and like yeah, like a ten wall behind the backboard. And then here, like, you don't even have the rim on the, the wall. You know what I mean? You have a little stand, and then it goes so far back. So your attention can kind of um, get distracted. Yeah, Gregory, 56. St. Augustine, 31. About four minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Foul by St. Augustine. Hawks number one, Logan Marks. Foul going up. Foul is called number five, Peter Duckman. Wear my shirt, sir. I never matched that before. I forgot to wear it. Yeah, boy, I'm not. Okay. New to the game for the Hawks, number five, representing Stag. Number 20, Dominic Murphy. And number 25, Jackson Dickinson. Gregory just emptied out the bench for the last four minutes of this game. Let's see how they keep up. Looks like a nice shot. Hey, it really takes a whole game to get back into your groove playing on this, this court. It's going to be rough. Oh, if you're a St. Augustine, you're, you're down by 27 right now in the fourth quarter. About three minutes, three and a half minutes left. You want to try to, you know, against the reserves for Gregory, you want to try to get there to at least a 20 point game. Like I said, get a, get a little, little momentum going into your game tomorrow against Chandler Pro. Yeah, I'm afraid at this point they're just kind of playing with fool's gold, you know, trying to get those players on the court, get the fun experience, because, I mean, it's, unless you're D1, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, so I think that, um, yeah, no, this one, this one's a wrap. Man, they know it. You know, you kind of said, you, as a coach, you want to, you know, this is a, almost a once-in-a-lifetime event. You want at least every player to play, you know, especially on this court. But, you know, at the same time, this isn't just a, a tournament. You know, it's not a, a game that doesn't count towards your, your PowerPoint. This, these are all PowerPoint games for these teams. And a lot of late in the season, a lot of these games are, you know, matter heavily mm -hmm. uh, for playoff seeding, for regional seeding, all that other stuff. You know, like the game tonight, uh, Choi and Catfoot, like that, that game has huge implications on the season. Yeah, but, you know, in games like this at this point, it's just... Oh, yeah, when you're down 20, 28. Let's get them all in. Heck, suit up the coach. Let him get that experience, too. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Let him get that shot out there. <laughs> yeah, let me let me get my free shot. Gregory leads 60-31 um, with 3.20 left on the clock. Trying to find something, some little spark. Fortunately, I don't see much happening. Yeah, when shots like that are falling, that's how you know it's a rough night. Hawks took the ball out of bounds. It'll be Wolf's ball at the baseline. Hawks number one, Logan Marks. Number 13, Luke Withers. 3.07 left in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Yeah, so we got 306 left in the fourth quarter. Um, foul count is Gregory, seven, and same for St. Augustine, seven. 
Um, I'm surprised we didn't get a mercy roll tonight. Um, Consider this this big blowout. I think. If, remind me, is it up by 30 by the end of the third? Yeah. So if, if you're up by 30, uh, it's a running clock in any, at any point in the second period. Yeah. Or the second half, should I say? But in the in the final minute, no matter what the score is, it's, they have the stoppages. Okay. Let's see, Andres at the line. And it rims out. Oh, when he gets it back. All right, back to Gregory. Something I like about Gregory is they like to um, play at their own pace. You know, they're not really startled too much. As you can tell, with their ball movement, getting the shots they want. We got 218 left. It's looking pretty rough. Um, no, I suppose you could say we don't have too much else to expect. No, I mean, it was 27 point lead when, when Gregory put in their, their reserves. So, yeah, um, two minutes left. Jump ball. Goes to St. Augustine. But when Gregory put in all the reserves, they you know they took out all the starters, they took out their main players. It was a 27-point game. We kind of talked about how St. Augustine needed to kind of use that to their advantage and get a little little momentum going. Mm -hmm. But since then, the, the lead grew to 31. And nice little bucket by St. Augustine. You see Kylan Boswell with the yeah. UJ Wildcats making an appearance. He's the, uh, I believe, he started early. I think he skipped his senior to come here yeah he should he should be a senior in high school right now yeah so from what I heard I think he had a he had to get surgery so he took his bets and just came early and I believe in the U of A game against Oregon he put up like 15 on 23 minutes played he's uh he's looking nice coming into it. I remember at the beginning of the season he was looking a little rough but of course I mean he's a 17 he's the youngest player in college um, of course you're gonna need the time to warm up and get right and he's fitting well right now he's showing off that yeah, I'm a five star. I earned it. Looking nice. Yeah. 50 seconds left in the game. Again, you know, oh, it's a 29 point game. Yeah, this one's a wrap. Let's see. Let's see how we ended off. Get some sort of energy. It's been pretty mellow since the second half. Number five with the bucket to uh, the inbound. Let's see. Let's see if Gregory's gonna take a shot or they're just gonna run out the clock. I think they're just gonna run the or uh, keep playing, I'm sorry. Gregory at the post up. Rings out. Let's see if they're gonna keep looking for their buckets. When you make this, you get within that 27 point lead I was talking about. So. Yep. Oh, three. And it's in and out. And that'll do it. Gregory School 62, St. Augustine 35. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this game. Hope everyone had a great day. On to the next.